Let us pray. And they are bad, right? Our Father, we are asking that you will make your word clear to every one of us this afternoon and this morning in Jesus' name. Lead us in your right way. Give us a listening ear and an understanding heart that will be able to follow you every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. This month, as we earlier announced, we are handling the marriage problem, the family problem, and all concerning marriage and family in every one of our lives. Ni osu gege bi ati fi se ifi lo. A o ma soro lori igbeyawo, awon isoro to wa ninu igbeyawo ninu ebi ati tito omo. We have also announced that you should drop your questions on marriage in the boxes for questions that are provided so that we can read these questions and see how to help you as we answer these questions in the messages as it is all people over me very few call because it's also now on a good tv to have the calculus you know and we're going to have some more out car i'll be laying on you i want you to know what i should write to a lot of money in the video this morning we're going to allow the lord to speak to us on finding knowing and doing god's will near roy i'll sort of know we wife a lot of me more at she she that is we're talking on how to make the right decision in a way be actually say if we know to dara immediately we announce such a subject some people are tuned up they say well today is not for me because i am married already naked it below in baghdad day i'm not leaving you pay a little while for me learning to repay more to see we are now it is a wrong notion in the midst of believers that we only pray to find the will of god when we want to get married oh jay root you load in you know okay on you back on you back about little people but i'm actually we are only going to be we do not realize that throughout life we make decisions and those decisions either make or mar us either develop us or destroy us there are questions relating to our personal lives our personal happiness in life our progress in life and we need to find the will of god concerning them every time in the family in the home and every time in your place of work you're asking for the right step to take you are asking for the proper decision to make in short you want to find the will of God for every day, every week, and every month, every year of your life. Ni bogo eba ni bi share ni no ebi ni on fe lati mo kini ife olono ni pa on kakati on fe da wole tabiti on fe she ni kukuru on ni pe on fe she ipe no ni no bogo kati ba on fe she ni no ju aye re ni bogo ju ni bogo se ni bogo shi ni bogo do. The question you are asking is what is the will of God for my life? Ibe re ti on be re ni ipe kini ife olono fi ni se aye. But your question may be who should I marry? Tabi ibe re ni jaya ipe tani kim fe. A man or a woman has spoken to you, and the question you are asking is, is God leading me to this man or this woman? You know, even there are times it's not on marriage, but you are asking, which church should I attend? You want to know the will of God. After you are married, you want to know what is a proper decision to take. Should my wife be full? time housewife or should i allow her to take a walk in the office you want to know the will of god my wife is bringing a suggestion she wants to go back to school to go and finish her education at our marriage was the will of god was a proper decision to take that's why it's important to listen life centers around making decisions asking seeking finding knowing and doing god's will sometimes you are asking that this work i am in 
Should I change my present employment? In short, you are looking for the will of God in that area. Igba mi na umbere ipe sheti mo she ni sisi. Show ya kini kuro ni bi shena kini wa ishe mi na oti onso ni ipe onfe wa onfe ma if you're lord. Sometimes you want to know should I rent or should I build a house of my own? If I'm going to build, should I build in a hometown or build in Lagos? That's also wanting to know God's will. Igba mi na onfe ma if you're lord ni pa abu ya ki o lord ya ilikbe ni tabi pe ki o ko ile ti re tabi pe ki o ko le si ilure ni tabi ki o ko ile se ko onfe ma if you're lord. Now that that I am married will the mother of the husband or the mother of the wife live with us in the family you want to know what's the proper decision to take there is a way you can know how to find the will of God in that area shall we have a young lady a young girl a relative to live with us and be a helper in the home you want to know the will of God. And if the maid living with us is, is misbehaving, should we send her back home? Or should we allow her to stay? You want to know the will of God before deciding. Now, now we're married now we have three four children and my mother is saying bring one my husband's mother is saying bring one granny told me say send one to me what's the will of god should we send the children home to mommy or to granny and then so we can be freer you want to know the will of god Sometimes you want to make a major purchase after you are married. You have decided there is confusion. Should we make this major purchase or not? In short, you are finding out what's the will of God. How do I take the proper decision? Your own may just be what career should I choose in life or should I change my career of being a trader should I now go into another area of work from the beginning of young adulthood in your life you start making decisions choices that may help you or hinder you develop you or destroy you know, you know sometimes when young people come and you say they want to get married and we tell them find out the will of God and they say what do you mean by the will of God then we ask them so you don't know what it means to find the will of God when you went to school didn't you find the will of God before going to school when you want to buy something apart from marriage did you not know how to find the will of God before buying that thing choosing your friend even ordinary friends didn't you find the will of God parking from one place to the other did you just park as a Christian so you didn't find the will of God you know some people don't know we find the will of God in different areas of our lives some people act as if you know when they want to get married and they tell them find the will of God they say okay I will try and they pray and pray they say God you show me your will this time once I get your will for this marriage I will never talk to you about finding your will I'll just live my life anyhow I like this will of God is so difficult to find. I want me to know that you are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. You are not going to be able to find your will. 
ti ma ti le se o gbogbo eyi o ku ninu igbese aye mi ko ni lo pe ke ma ife re ma my brother my sister the praying to find the will of god before you marry is a training ground to prepare you to know how to find the will of god in many 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 things after you have got married ara kun ara birin mi lati wa di fi olorun ninu eh ki o to se igbeyawo o je ibi keko fun o lati le ma wa di fi olorun ninu awon kan miran ninu igbese aye re to ba nfe dawo le lojo iwaju if you do it faithfully today to find the will of god when you get into the marriage you'll be able to know how to find the will of god in all the areas of marriage to ba se pelu otito kan loni lati gbadura ki o si wa di fi olorun ki o to se igbeyawo yi nigba to ba se igbeyawo na tan ninu awon kan miran to ba nfe dawo le wa le wa di fi olorun yo si ro olorun do you know one i was young we used to have a type of Please. This my brother, much much younger and uh, you know much smaller. Well, hold something and put it down. I like when he meet you. See, girl, or don't mind it. Okay, do me love. You move, can you see? Fisile. No, we'll take scarf and then we'll bind the eyes of that child. I will have the uh, 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 see scarf. We have the do or don't mind it. And then we put him to be in that other place. As we walk by, lost him. Mira. We make him to run. I'm a coastary. And see if he can catch this thing we're looking for. Be an equal moon, can't he? And why? And then we stay there. I was. And he's running and running. You must have the before he gets to it. You to David. We pull it away. I'll fucking hide it at the back. I'll be back there. <laughs> you didn't get it, did you? Ah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? That's how we think God is being with us. Feel that God is blindfolding us. Putting His will somewhere. And then we're running and running. Just before you get it, God will put it back. Hide it at the back. And God will say, "You'll we'll never get it." Did you get it? Oh no, you'll never try again. And then you start that plane again. And then it blindfolds you. Then you pray and pray and pray. You see counseling. You read the Bible. You do everything you can do. Just before you get it. Then God in a play, you know, will hide it again. We never got it until we ended the until we ended the play. God is not doing child's play. God is very serious about finding his will. He wants you to find it. He will help you to find it. It's not difficult to know God. It is not difficult to know the will of God to find the will of God. And if you are really attentive to the word of God and believing from this day, you will never have problems seeking and finding the will of God. He wants to help us. Why should he blindfold us? Why should he be hiding his will from us? But you see, we ourselves must sincerely desire to want to know and to find that will of God. I've told you that praying specifically to know God's will in marriage is only the starting point. It's the practicing ground. It will give you experience in praying to know and find the will of God in your future life in all areas of life. And my brother, my sister, if you have known the will of God, allow that other person also to practice it, to pray, and to know personally how to find the will of God. Because when you come together and you begin to live together, there will be major uh, difficult issues on which you will want to find the will of God. If both of you get married and you know how to find the will of God and she does not know how to find the will of God there will always be disagreement in your marriage. Confusion and argument because you see you are disciplined and trained in finding the will of God. But the other person is not trained in that way. She doesn't know how to find the 
will of God. Let us also know how to find the will of God so it will help you when you get married. Those who have got married, they know that one of the difficult areas is in taking decisions at home. Because one of them masters the art of making decisions and the other one is totally ignorant in making decisions. One is quick, impulsive, thoughtless, and short-sighted. The other one is very thoughtful and slow and calculating and wise and purposeful and prayerful. The and an experiment was performed uh, some time ago. Many people were interviewed on how they make decisions. And they found out something that is terrifying and fearful for humanity. They, they tried to find out how people made decisions when they were five years of age. When they grow to 10 years of age, they also try to know how they took their decisions. When they got to the age of 20, they found out how they made their decisions. And when they got to the age of 35, they found out how they make their decisions. You know what the experiments discover? that for a human being except for the exceptional cases but for the generality of people the way you made your decisions at 5 at 10 at 20 is exactly the same as the way you made that decision at the age of 35 see this way how do children take their decisions if that thing gives me a present temporary feeling of satisfaction, I choose it. I do it. At five, that's how we take decisions. At ten, that's how we take decisions. At twenty, that's how we take decisions. At thirty-five, that's how we take decisions. At sixty, that's how we take decisions. We don't look far ahead. If it gives me present feeling of satisfaction temporarily today, I choose it. I do it. Now, if there is a door of circumstance open before me, I get it. Look at little children. Now they may want to go this direction. If the door is locked. And they just look at this other door and the door is open. Immediately that child will take decision. I'm not going there anymore. This is where I'm going to because the door is open. That's how we did at five. That's how we do at ten. That's how we do at twenty. If the door is closed, we don't pray. We don't ask God. We say, well, one door is open here. That's my way. That's where I'm going. And you know there are people that take decisions that way. You know, for little children, if uh, they have a number of little children like themselves saying, do it, do it, the majority will carry the vote. I know one person that never carried that, never followed the majority. That's our master, our savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus told his disciples to vote whether I will go to the cross or not, he will never die for humanity. In Jesus Christ, we have the mature pattern of taking decisions. My brother, my sister, what made the children of Israel not to get to the land of Canaan? The majority said, don't go, they didn't go. And so many people still take decisions like they took it in the past just to depend upon the advice of many other people of the majority around them. 
Have you ever looked at little children? Little children are always doing something because there is a fear of doing nothing. You know, if you are doing nothing, they feel something is wrong with you. Little children cannot sit down and be quiet for one hour, for two hours. There is a fear of doing nothing. So get up and do something. That's how some people take decisions. They fear doing nothing. They fear being slow. They fear the consequence of delay and patience. So they decide quickly and do something in a hurry. You know, I know little children. Because I was one before. And if you are holding something that looks attractive, it may not around. be important, it may not be essential, it may not be significant to his happiness. If it is attractive, he wants it immediately. The people who do advertising, do you see the billboards on our road? They know that adults are children. They know that when you are 60, you are just like slaves. They know the way you think is the way the little children think. If it is attractive, get it. That's how we decided when we were young. And today, when we are 25 or 30 or 45 or 70, if it is attractive, get it. You want it. You need it. And that's how some people get married. Because they have not developed, they have not been matured in their way of making decisions. You know, sometimes you are sitting down. All of a sudden, there is a sudden impulse. A quick desire. And you just suddenly discover that you want something. Now you know when we were young. And you know these little children they are playing. All of a sudden, a little child sees another little child having something. He draws interest in every other thing in life. There is a sudden impulse, a quick desire. And there is an immediate action. That may lead to eventual dissatisfaction. And the child begins to cry. He wants that thing immediately. What's the name of that thing? He doesn't know. What will that thing do for you? He doesn't know. What's the advantage of that thing? He doesn't know. What do you have that is more important than that thing? He doesn't know. There is a sudden impulse. There is a quick desire. And he wants immediate action. Give it to me immediately. Do you know something? When we become older, we just see a car on the street. There is a sudden impulse. There is a quick desire. There is immediate action. We go to the showroom the second day. We want to get that car. If we don't get it one happy throughout life. I mean, you go to you know you go to a fellowship, you go to a place where some friends are together. You see somebody putting on a type of clothes, and the thing may just when you put it in water, it becomes like paper. But you see it, and immediately there is a sudden impulse. A quick desire. There is an immediate action you want to take. You want it immediately. What's that telling me and telling you? The way we were at 6 is the way we are at 36. We have not changed. And in marriage it is the same. You know I just see a lady. I say that when 
well that lady is tall enough plumpy enough uh, hair enough well dressed yeah, enough wash of there is a quick impulse a sudden impulse a quick desire and I'm saying God you don't give me that lady to marry I will weep and weep until everyone will not be able to do anything else Oh God, if you love me, get me that woman. If I am not serving Jesus Christ in vain, get me that woman. If you want me to be happy in life, get me that woman. If you don't want my friends to say I am serving God for nothing, get me that woman. A sudden impulse. You have not prayed. You don't know the will of God. You don't have the right to make a decision yet because there is no leading from God. The point I'm making to you is that even when we're old, we're still like the small children. Don't feel guilty. We have all been like that before. In Job chapter 32. Job chapter 32. Verses 8 and 9. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty gives them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Uh, Job chapter 34 I'm reading verses 31 and 32 Surely it is meet proper to be said unto God I have born chastisement I will, of, I will not offend any more that which I see not Teach thou me If I have done iniquity I will do no more you know, in our life, we do not have wisdom. We do not understand what to choose, how to choose, when to choose A. I'm pointing three men to you in the Bible. They needed to decide on an important thing. We're going to see how they decided. What what motivated their decision and what is the result or the consequence of the decision they took the first man is David in 1 Samuel chapter 23 I'm reading there from verse 1 to verse 5 David saying behold the Philistines fight against Kayla and they rob the threshing floor Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kaila. Once we found that Philippe, Sawu, and Wara Philistine, and Bara Kaila Jagun, once he jar, he lay back and one in Lily. David is very low, Lord of Luape, gave me Koko, Kyoloko, and Wara Philistia, and he be Uluasi, we found that Philippe, Lord. David had an important decision to make. He knew that he was short sighted. He was not going to depend upon his feeling. We are told he inquired of the Lord. Now come with me to first Kings and see another one. Another individual. First Kings. Kings chapter 12 from verse 6 First Kings chapter 12 verse 6 and the king Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said how do ye advise that I may answer this people? Solomon 
Here is a person that will not pray but will ask old men. There's an advantage of asking old men questions. They have made more mistakes in life. That's one quality old men have. More than young people. And because they have made many mistakes in life. They are able to point to the stumbling stone. They will say, children, look at that. I stumbled over that stone. But there is no one as ancient as the ancient of days. There is no one that is wise as the wiser than Solomon. There is no one that knows the plan of your life, the direction you should go as the Almighty God in heaven. Old men may see far, but they cannot see as far as God can see. But this Rehoboam did not even follow the advice that the old men gave him. In verse 8, but he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him which stood before him. That's another example. Or you will know he ruined his life. He lost the throne. He lost the great sin that God himself had provided for him. Let me show you the third man. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 4. 1 Samuel 28. From verse 4. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Philistine is equal, I want you to know and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and he said, greatly tremble. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not. Nibati saw Lucy Berry, Lord Olua, Olua could die alone. Now we're talking about a man that did not even pray. As on if I need to go to Legbad, right? And we say that is not good enough. As if we pay Leko Bojumo. Now we see another man that even prayed and inquired of the law. Our dear Lumina took bad rat to tell you what you And the Bible said God looked at him. This is interpretation. Kneeling down and talking. And God uh, drew the curtain and said, Who is that? And the angel said, Saul. And got on his face away. He said, Don't give him any answer. And yet there was a man called David. The moment he started to pray, God began to give him the answer. What's the difference? One had relationship with God. The other one was in rebellion against God. So if you are going to find the will of God, you are praying about the will of God. Do you have relationship with God? David had the promises of God. David Turn with me to Psalm 32. Verse 8. And if you are a child of God, this is a promise for you. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Ah. Psalm 37 verse 23 The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Psalm 37 
Psalm 73, verse 24. Thou wilt, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Thus says the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. By the way, you are the Lord thy God, which teaches thee you see, when you are a child of God, you have the promise of God. He says, don't be afraid, I will lead you. I will guide you. I will show you the way you must go. That's what gives you confidence when you pray. Before you pray, make up your mind. Settle it in your heart. God will answer me. And he will answer. Don't think that God is playing the game of hide and seek with you. He loves you. You are a child of God. He wants to direct you even more than you want the will of God. I told you about Saul, but then he prayed and there was no answer. What was the problem with Saul? Four problems. You may want to write. It down. One, the problem of sin in Psalm 66, verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 Because I have called and ye refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded Twenty-five, but ye have set at not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Verse 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. So if you are seeking the will of God, remove the sin problem. God is not difficult to find His will. Or the sin problem. He is not so far away you cannot hear Him talk to you. He says, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. The second problem is the problem of self-will. Oh God, lead me as to what to do, but I don't want to do this. God, I like to get married, but it must not be so somebody from another God, I like to get married, but it must not be somebody from another state. Oh God, you know I'm seeking your will. I really want you to direct me, but I hope you'll give me a graduate. Because you know I have a lot of grammar to blow and I need somebody to blow that grammar with. You see, God is a tailor. Don't tell him how to sew the clothes. He knows your stature. He knows the size that will fit you. He knows the color that will match you. Give everything to him. 
him and when you come and he puts that clothes upon you man people will ask you who did this for you that's the that's the almighty god in heaven he is perfect at everything don't you remember in the don't you remember in the wilderness the children of israel did not go describing to god the type of food to give them he knows all the vitamins they need in their body how foolish for me child of yesterday to be dictating to god the ancient of days what to give me doesn't he know more than i know the problem of finding the will of god in prayer is a problem of self-will a decided interest on a particular thing let god choose remove your hand from that thing in john chapter 7 verse 17 if any man will do his will he shall know if any man will do his will God will make you to know that will and the teaching and the word whether it's of God or not but you know if I'm self will and I'm telling God dictating to God this is what you must do if you know what to do why are you asking God again just have faith in God he knows better than you know he knows all your needs let him choose and you will never regret his choice another problem we saw was a problem of unbelief there is an act of unbelief there is a state of unbelief there is a difference between both you see sometimes when you are sick your faith may not be strong enough you are not in a state of unbelief. It only happens at that point or moment in time. You have a little doubt. But there are people who are in a complete, total, entire stage of unbelief. And you know, people like that, when they are asking God something, they really don't mean it because they don't believe God is going to answer anyway. Don't put yourself in a state of unbelief if you're asking for God's perfect will in a matter. In James chapter 1, verse 6, But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers is, is like a wave of the sea. A driven with the wind topped and tossed. Nitori and it only made you that big you may continue. Let not that man sing that he shall receive any sin of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Another problem with Saul was that there was an idol in the heart. You see, covetousness is idolatry according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 and Ezekiel chapter 14 verses 3 and 4 tell us Ezekiel chapter 14 verses 3 and 4 telling us that if we have an idol in the heart the lord will not be able to give us what we actually will need son of man these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face should i be inquired of at all by them once if you only did good, I said it didn't want to see what you want. A new hijacking one be lower, Merabi. 
Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I will, I the Lord will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. <laughs> Bayi le Oluwa bayi ni Oluwa Olorun wi Olukuluko okunrin ile Israel ti o gbe orisha re si okan re ti o si fi ohun idigbulu ase dede re si waju re ti o si wa sodo woli emi Oluwa yo da eni ti o wa lohun gege bi opolopo orisha re in second Samuel chapter 22 ninu we Samuel keji ori keji le logun verse 27 ese iketa din logbon with the peel thou will show thyself peel and with the forward thou will show thyself on severing fun oni nu fun fun ni wo ofi ara re han fun ni fun fun ati fun eni wiwo ni iwo ofi ara re han ni wiwo and my brother my sister never get into the mistake of having that idol and bringing the idol before god and saying god that is it give it to me ara ko ara binrin mi ma se wa ni ko to je pe wa gbe orisha sokan ti wa si to olorun wa ti ma tu wa ma wi pe olorun orisha yin ni we wo fun mi ni nkan yin psalm 106 psalm verses 14 verses 13 to 15 orin davidi ori ikerin din ni adofa ese iketa lati ikerin la they soon forgot his works they waited not for his counsel won ko pe gbagbe ise re won ko si duro de imo re Verse 14, they lost it exceeding wilderness, they, de they tempted God in the desert. Verse 15, he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. Now, let me quickly show you the prerequisites, the prayer, the pitfall, and the principles. What are the prerequisites in finding the will of God? What is the prayer pattern in knowing the will of God? What are the pitfalls to avoid in finding the will of God? What are the principles of testing whether I've got the will of God or not? I'm sure you know that as you come here this morning, you don't think I will just stand up here. And I will say, if you are Brother Michael, can you stand up? You, are no, you want to know the will of God. Yes, that's grace in the other way, that's the will of God. And I will clap our hands and say, God is wonderful. We said so. This time of revival, God is doing things that are new. And I said, Janet, can you stand up? And then Janet stands up. You see uh, Oluremi there. And that's the will of God. Next Saturday, come and you can get married. And we clap and we say, oh God, praise the Lord. No, my brother, my sister. We can't do that because you see, when you get married, you need to find out the will of God for your marriage. You won't have me around after you have got married asking, What's the will of God as for buying car? If you are going to decide on the will of God on major and minor issues in your life, how after the marriage, get it started right now to know how to find the will of God. Number one, the prerequisites in finding the will of God. Number one, it says be a child of God. That's important. That's foundational. God doesn't talk to strangers as he talks.
talks to children. He does not give the bread meant for the children to the dogs. He does not mix the children of light and the children of darkness together. You want to have the privilege of the counsel of God, of the mind of God, of the will of God, come into the fold, become a child of God. That's a prerequisite. Number two, act on what you already understand in the word of God. The Bible says you love your enemy. Act on that first. Let God know you are serious on the word of God. The Bible says you pray without season. Then get at it. Kneel down, pray, because you understand that already. While you are waiting for what you don't understand, start acting on what you understand. Then be willing to accept before you know his will, because he loves you. I've read that to you already in John chapter 7 verse 17. If you are willing, you will know. God has your best interest at heart. And the will of God begins by committing yourself absolutely, totally to the revealed will of God. If you are willing, then for I, you must have a regular intake of the word of God as a prerequisite before you can find the will of God. If I reject or neglect what is revealed already, how can I go further to seek what is not revealed? Neglect of present revelation closes the door to further revelation. Prerequisite believe that God will show you his will before you ever seek the will. Believe it absolutely. Firmly in your heart. God loves me. He will show me his will. Let me clear up something here. All I've seen and come short of the glory of God. If God should mark iniquity, who will stand? Don't stay on that give. You made a mistake before. You committed a sin before. Now don't stay on the guilt and say, since I made a mistake before, committed sin before, God will never talk to me again. That's not true. Permit, it, permit me to put it this way. Previous disobedience is not a sentence to spiritual mediocrity. If God has forgiven you, forget about it. Act like a real child of God. And believe that God will actually lead you. I've given you the prerequisites. I now go to the praying. Now, this is real praying, my brother, my sister. You know the type of prayer that will take a prayer book and say, Oh God, oh God, when you are finding the will of God, put the prayer book aside. That thing is not there. You can't go to the house leader and say, My brother, you can pray. When I listen to you pray, it's wonderful. Help me copy it down here. So that when I go to God, I take it before God and I say, Oh God, because it's the way our house fellowship leader prays, if you are finding the will of God, forget that. 
eh bi o ba wa ife olorun ki ye pe wa lo ba dari dapo jule re ke o pe adari dapo jule mi amu ti teji si adura re mo si mi pe mo si ri pe o ma mi le gan nitori na mo fe wa ife olorun iwo ba mi ba mi to sinu iwe ki nigba to ba to sinu iwe fun mi tan ki wa lo ba olorun pe ah olorun bi adari dapo jule wa se nigba adura ni wo olorun olorun mi you want to find the will of god in a simple way say god you know my heart Speak with your own voice to God. God doesn't look at grammar when you pray. He looks at face when you pray. God does not look at your stammering when you pray. He looks at your confidence when you pray. If you are a child, he says, Come in, let's have a talk together. When you ask him, ask him faith. Whenever there is doubt, go back on the love of God. Anybody can have doubt. You kill yourself because you have doubt. Whenever you are praying, you want to know the will of God. And the devil comes with a doubt. Stop that prayer. And just repeat to yourself. I know I'm a child of God. Jesus died for me on the cross of Calvary. Oh God, your word tells me that you love me and I believe it. Your promises are for me. I know that you are not a respectable person. Then remember past answers to your prayer. Remember your testimonies you have given. Remind God that time when this happened, you did this to me. At that other time when this happened, this is what you did for me. Let the love of God, the promises of God, and the testimony of past answers to your prayer, raise up your faith. When the answer comes, there will be three qualities you know, our time is gone, so I cannot go through the verses now. Number one, there will be peace within, when the answer Number two, there will be peace without when the answer has come. If the peace has come for today, after you have prayed to know the will of God, and you believe God is laying hand on that person on your behalf, on that other person on your behalf, and there is peace concerning it, it is possible that the second day, doubt then remember that if you trust God, lean upon God, that peace will settle again. Then there will be peace without. And you don't push everybody down to get to the will of God. You don't destroy your brothers and sisters so that you can lay hand on the will of God. The wisdom that is above is first peace. Then peaceable. Three, there will be confidence and assurance. Number three, the pitfalls to avoid. One never make decisions on circumstances only. Avoid using only your senses, you know, gauging it and examining it and evaluating it and looking at it and say, I think this one will do. No, make sure you are praying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hello, I'm going to say, 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 Avoid the danger of using God's will as a wheelbarrow where you push it wherever you want to go. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, You know, when you want to carry something somewhere, you just take your wheelbarrow, the wheelbarrow is in front and you continue to push it. Uh, 
o mo pe nigba to ba fe lo si to ba fe lo ra nkan ti o fe lo si bi kan wa gbe keke ti won ma nti wa ko nkan ti won fe ra si nu re wa ma lo and don't push the will of god that way ma se ti fe olorun be let the will of god come naturally je ki fe olorun ki o wa bi o se let it come as a result of prayer je ko ya gege bi aba yori adura don't make it don't fabricate it yourself ki wo ma fe owo ara re se get the result and the answer from god bai da won re lati odo olorun then for if you are determined to go your way god may give it to you with fearful consequences so humble yourself in the presence of god and just say lord that will be done e kerin bi o ba fe gba ife ni ona ti ara re ni ife ni ife nu ti ara re olorun le fun ole ona to je pe yo mu awon aba yori ti ko dara wa nitori na iwo duro ki o si gba ife olorun listen to this i cannot give you a more important thing in knowing the will of god on this point n ko le fun ni on to se pataki ju eyi lo ninu mi my brother this is important for you and for me ele se pataki fun ire ati emi you know sometimes you are praying o ma pe ni gbadura there is no ti gbadura There is peace within. There is peace without. There is confidence and assurance within you. When you sleep, you sleep in the in the joy of God. And you're always praying, saying, "Oh God, I thank you. I praise you. You have shown me your will." But understand, a problem may come after knowing the will of God. The problem is not to take the will of God away from you. The problem is to chat. and develop your confidence you remember abraham following the will of god coming out of the all of the chaldees to jade lati uri ni ile kaldia abraham to say abraham 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 Set the will of God. There was peace within. Peace without. Confidence and assurance. If there was no peace within and without, you will never be able to pack his load. He packed. Got his wife. And they were going. You know the very first place they got to. There was famine. Suppose we will say, "Well, God, did you call me?" The famine is not to tell us the will of God. The famine is to make us go back to faith and know and prove the will of God in that famine. Iyan ko mu wa lati pada kuro ninu ife Olorun ki a wi pe Olorun ki a wi pe ife Olorun ko ni yi. Iyan na wa lati mu ki agbadura ki a si mo yi pe e ki a si gbe keli Olorun. You know the problem with Job's friends? O mo wa ha lati awon ore Job ni. And they're still around. Won si wa lai. They will come to tell you. Won wa lati so fun. You know if there is a problem in your way it means it's not the will of God. Ma ke ti isoro ba nbe Olorun Well, even if it is not the will of God, it's not the problem alone that will tell. Go back to God and say, God, how about it? Be about it. Be about it. Be about it. If you're alone, you say you're alone. Can you also form a part of God? So the Lord can be alone. Alone, by only. Number six. If you start in the spirit, continue in the spirit. If you have got the will of God by walking in faith, continue in faith. Be about it. If you're alone, you pay back. Go. You want to see what you need. Back. Go. Don't lean on your senses and go back to the flesh. Walking by sight. Now, do you understand that if I look at a little part in a vehicle in a car, I mean somebody just brings a, a screw out of the car, a bolt. You look at it. It's ugly, unimportant. You are tempted to throw it away. It is only the mechanic that knows every. Everything about the car that knows the importance of that ugly little metal in your hand. Atuma to she ne kan yo ma pataki ati wulo in kan kekere tiko lewa tu melo wore. When I pull out, nimba ti moba fire. The wheel of God on a single point in my line. Nino koko kan nino aye. I look at that single point. Mo wo on a kekere. That single wheel of God. It's unimportant to me. Ugly to me. Unreasonable to me. God. 
God from heaven is looking at that little sin, that single point, not in isolation, but in the totality of the will of God for the whole of your life. When you fit it, when you fit it into the whole of your life, it will serve. It will be beautiful and wonderful. Don't mistake feeling for fire. Let me end up with the principles of testing. One the promise test is your conviction based on faith or is based on presumption and assumption. Is your anchor standing firm, anchored by the promises of God on this wheel of God which you say you have known? Tested by the promise of God. The promise test is important for you before you act on that will of God. Two, the purpose test. AKG. Does it fit into the overall purpose of God for your life? You are a Christian. Christian in your you want to glorify God in your life. If you go to marry a non-believer, does that fit into the perfect, final, overall purpose of your life? No, that's a purpose test. Yes, you are a Christian. You want to glorify God in your life. You are a Christian. Even when you say you are marrying this believer, test it. Does it fit into the overall purpose, objective, and goal that God has given you in your life? Test it. Test it. Test it. Does it glorify God in the overall accomplishment of this thing you want to do? Test it. The purpose test. Promise test, purpose test, the peace test. The peace test, the peace of God. Until God gives you peace, abiding rest, freedom from strain and stress and worry. Don't step out. Wait. Don't you say you have known the will of God. Picture yourself in the home of that man, in the home of that woman, and you are living together, sharing your life together. Does your peace still remain? Then for the pastor test. The promise test. The purpose test. The peace test. The pastor test. Don't act as an orphan. You have a representative of God here watching over your soul. Seek counseling from your pastor. And uh, place this in before the church because you see when all your advisors have gone, the church of God will still remain. <laughs> I told you what the Lord has written in His Word. The Holy Ghost can explain all these things to our hearts. And as we go to God, I am believing God with you that from this day it will be easy to find the will of God. God will show Himself to you. He will guide you. He will not leave you like an orphan. He will not allow you to go through the tunnel in darkness without giving you the light to show you the way. He will lead us. He will guide us. And he will give us the grace and the ability to follow when he has spoken unto us. If you are looking for the will of God, Eli told Samuel, whenever you hear him touching you, calling you, uh, you know, just calling your attention, you speak to him. Speak, Lord, for thy servant here. Pray the Lord will speak to every one of us. Rise up and let us pray.
thank the Lord for what he has taught us this morning. Ask him to open up his will to you. To make you detect and understand that will of God. He will trust him and depend upon him. He loves you. He will not allow you to go astray. If there has been a mistake in the past, put that under the blood of Jesus. And God himself will guide and control, direct and lead, and he will make you to enjoy his will all through your life. 